as, as lay folk, we've been hearing about quantum computers for a while now, and I'm just wondering if you can just briefly tell us, do you have a concept of what a quantum computer is physically going to look like? And um, not just that, but what, what is it that we're waiting for with quantum, quantum computers? What's the holdup? When, when are we going to get them? And, and when am I going to be able to put one in my pocket? No, it's a great question, and I think when people first started to talk about quantum computers, which was around 1990, so it's quite recent, um, uh, people it, it was very much seen as pie in the sky. Uh, 20 years ago, this was total pie in the sky, um, because it seemed so powerful and so all-encompassing. But, um, but that's changed just in that 20 years. And I think when I came to, we're very fortunate here, we have, uh, you know, Perimeter is the world, one of the world's leading theory centers about quantum computing, but we also have the world's largest center for actually building one, uh, which is the Institute of Quantum Computing in University of Blue, and now the Quantum Nano Center, which just opened. So these are very large experimental centers really trying to find the technology that will enable a quantum computer. Now, at some level, um, it seems trivial because the world is quantum, okay? So every bit of matter in this room is a quantum computer. I mean, the wood is a quantum computer. <laughs> the, the table, we are a quantum computer. You know, everything works that. That is just the way the world works. So it's the cheapest of all possible technologies. Just take any system. <laughs> okay, it is a quantum computer. Now what you have to do though, is you have to be able to probe it incredibly accurately um, to, 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 to be able to program it and, and read it out. And you have to very carefully screen any possible interference with the calculation you wanted to do. And those are the difficult things, is to screen it. So if you walk into the quantum nano center, the University of Waterloo, your BlackBerry stops working. Because the whole building is absolutely screened against electromagnetic radiation from outside because they have labs in there that even one little radio wave will completely spoil the experiment. Okay? So this is highly, highly precise um, measurement is the key. And so just to give you an example of the technologies which are now around the corner, I came here four years ago, it still seemed a long way off. In the last one year, new ideas have come along, which bring it a whole lot nearer. And now very serious scientists are speaking that within two years, we should have a functioning system. I mean, it's, it's really getting that close. Um, that doesn't mean it'll be on your pocket. <laughs> you know, this may be something you can demonstrate in the lab, and it may take 10 years or 20 years to commercialize and to make into a usable device, but it's really extremely close. I'll give you uh, an example. So you can manufacture diamond in the lab now, artificial diamonds, they make them over there. Um, they are a micron layer thick, and it's absolutely perfect diamond crystal in a uh, completely perfect geometry. So you could make micro, uh, micro thick slabs of diamond. And then what you do is you do deposit nitrogen atoms in the middle of the diamond crystal. So one nitrogen atom you can deposit. And then that, that little nitrogen atom is a sensor. So you can access it with a laser and ask, what is it sensing? And you can use that nitrogen atom to me measure magnetic field uh, that the slab is next to, to exquisite precision. Um, and that's the kind of new thing that has just become possible. And so basically using arrays of single atoms, each one of which is controlled, and then you bring a single atom near to the actual computing element of the quantum computer, which might be an organic molecule, like a strand of protein or a DNA. And uh, like I said, you basically need 300 of these. And we talk in terms of qubits, not bits. A bit is a classical computer, but a 300 quantum bit computer would, um, as I said, would store all the same information as in every particle in the universe. 
in the position of every particle in the universe. So that the, all conceivable classical universes would be encapsulated by this 300 qubit quantum computer, and that could be made out of a molecule with 300 atoms. So it's pretty tiny. <laughs> so yeah, one of the experiments now being uh, planned is to create that, an array of 80 qubit quantum computers and 100 billion of these quantum computers in parallel on a deposited on a diamond slab and accessed through these nitrogen atoms. Um, so these are really, really tiny little things. 